Jesus needed a savior. Thankfully, Jesus knew a really good Savior, his Father, the only true God. Christ, in the days of his flesh, offering both petitions and supplications with strong clamor and tears to him who is able to save him out of death. Why did Jesus, the Savior of the world, need his own Savior, one who is able to save him out of death? Jesus had proven prior to his death that he was able to save other people out of death. He resurrected many people during his earthly ministry. But Jesus saved people out of death while he was alive. When he was dead, he had no ability. Zero. Nada. Zilch. Death does bad things to people. All people. It ends their life and all of their ability. That's why death is called our enemy. It's not a friend that ushers us into the presence of God. It's not a friend that transports us into a higher form of life. Death was also Jesus' enemy. While he was dead, even God's own son had no life and was totally helpless. The Lamb of God was just as dead as every other lamb slain before him. The Lamb of God was not playing possum. Therefore, it was up to Jesus' Father to save him out of death. Unlike most in Orthodox Christianity, Jesus knew the truth about death, that the dead do nothing and the dead know nothing. He knew that he would do nothing and know nothing while he was dead, and that he would live again only by the power of his Father. Jesus taught the unbelieving Jewish religious leaders a big truth regarding the dead. Luke 20, 38. Now God is he not of the dead, but of the living, for all to him are living. Jesus knew his father would not be his God for the short duration of his death. The word God is from the Greek word theos, which means placer. God would not be placing Jesus while he was dead. He doesn't place anyone while they're dead. Therefore, he's not the God of the dead. But Jesus had faith in his father that his father was able to save him out of death and that his father would save him out of death because Jesus also knew that all to God are living. Jesus knew he would live again, not in and through death, but through resurrection out of death by his father. When I picture God placing Jesus, I see it like a game of chess. While Jesus was alive, he was on the chessboard, and his father, the only true placer, was his placer, moving Jesus according to the father's will. When Jesus died, he was removed from the board for three days, and his father was not his placer for those three days. When Jesus' father saved him out of death, Jesus was returned to the board, God was once again Jesus God, and the father resumed the placing of his son. Even with his solid faith, Jesus' impending death weighed heavily upon him, as he prayed in the garden with strong clamor and tears to him who was able to save him out of death. To his last breath on the cross, he was in extreme anguish. Matthew 27, 46. Now about the ninth hour, Jesus exclaims with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why didst thou forsake me? Jesus knew death was going to separate him from his father for the first time, and his God would not be his God for three days. The stress of this was crushing, but praise him, he endured the cross and its shame for us, knowing the joy that would be his when his father saved him out of death. Luke 23, 46, and shouting with a loud voice, Jesus said, Father, into thy hands am I committing my spirit. Now saying this, he expires. Jesus, with full faith in his Father, gave up his spirit and died. Notice that Jesus faithfully committed his spirit into his Father's hands, not into his own hands. Jesus didn't keep his spirit. When his spirit and body were separated, he died. But Jesus' faith was rewarded after he was saved out of death by his Father, and his Father was once again his God, his placer. John 20, 17. Jesus is saying to Mary, Do not touch me, for not as yet have I ascended to my Father. Now go to my brethren and say to them that I said, Lo, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, and my God and your God. And place Christ he did, seating him at his right hand up over everything. Ephesians 1, 20 through 21. 
the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, rousing him from among the dead and seating him at his right hand among the celestials, up over every sovereignty and authority and power and lordship and every name that is named, not only in this eon, but also in that which is impending. The truth that Jesus was dead and doing nothing while dead contradicts Orthodox Christianity's version of what Jesus was doing for three days while he was dead. Stop! Did you see what I just did there? Air quoting the word dead? Replay that. Contradicts Orthodox Christianity's version of what Jesus was doing for three days while he was dead. I'm trying to show you that Orthodox Christianity says Jesus was dead while at the same time trying to teach us that he was alive and well and doing things while dead. Orthodox Christianity proclaims a very active dead Jesus, who, while dead, was still on the clock, continuing his work for his father, doing God knows what. At the end of this video, I'll have a link to another video that goes into more detail on what Jesus was doing while he was dead. The first phase of Jesus' mission to save the world finished when he died. Saving Jesus out of death was his father's responsibility. If Jesus was responsible for saving himself out of death, this phase of his mission would not have been accomplished until he self-resurrected. John 19:30. When then Jesus took the vinegar, he said, It is accomplished. And reclining his head, he gives up the spirit. Jesus died, and it was now his father's task to save Jesus out of death. If it was Jesus' job to save himself out of death, his proclamation, It is accomplished, was a bit premature. It's an awesome fact that God saved Jesus out of death. But God didn't just save Jesus out of death in the same manner that Jesus had previously resurrected others. God vivified Jesus. God made Jesus immortal. John 5:21. For even as the Father is rousing the dead and vivifying, thus the Son also is vivifying whom he will. Notice the Father is rousing the dead and vivifying. These are two distinct actions of God's work for the dead. Rousing is from the Greek word egeri, which is used at times of God rousing people out of death. Vivifying is the Greek word zepoi, which is making alive beyond mortal life. It is speaking of immortality. The people Jesus raised from the dead were not vivified. They were not made immortal. They died again. And notice Jesus also will in the future be vivifying whom he will. 1 Peter 3.18, saying that Christ also for our sakes once died concerning sins, the just for the sake of the unjust, that he may be leading us to God, being put to death indeed in flesh, yet vivified in spirit. Jesus was put to death in flesh. He died. He was very dead. Dead dead. His spirit was in his Father's hands. Then God returned Jesus' spirit to his body, and Jesus was vivified. He was made immortal. And here it is passive. This was done by God to and for Jesus. And Jesus will not die again. Romans 6, 9. Having perceived that Christ, being roused from among the dead, is no longer dying, death is lording it over him no longer. Christ was roused from among the dead by his Father. Roused is from the Greek word egertis, and it is in the passive voice. God roused Jesus from among the dead. He will not die again. Jesus is now immortal, and he is currently the only human with immortality. 1 Timothy 6, 13-16 I am charging you in the sight of God, who is vivifying all, and of Jesus Christ, who testifies in the ideal avowal before Pontius Pilate, that you keep this precept unspotted, irreprehensible, under the advent of our Lord Christ Jesus. 
which to its own eras the happy and only potentate will be showing. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, who alone has immortality, making his home in light and accessible, whom not one of mankind perceived, nor can be perceiving, to whom be honor and might, Eonian. Amen. This is great news. God is vivifying all. But currently, Jesus alone is the only human with immortality. No, your dead loved ones have not been made immortal, and they are not in heaven. Neither are they the living dead who are currently suffering in the mythical Christian hell. But they will eventually be immortal. As verse 13 says, God is vivifying all. 1 Corinthians 15:22. For even as in Adam all are dying, thus also in Christ shall all be vivified. All humanity in Adam are dying, and most have died. Thus also in Christ all humanity, all the old humanity, the same all that are dying in Adam, shall be vivified because of Christ. All will be made immortal, just as Christ has been made immortal. 1 Corinthians 15:45. If there is a soulish body, there is a spiritual also. Thus it is written also, the first man, Adam, became a living soul, the last Adam a vivifying spirit. Because God made Christ, also known as the last Adam, a vivifying spirit, Christ will also be vivifying whoever he wills to vivify, as we saw previously in John 5:21. It's important to know that the Father is the source of life for all, including His Son. The Father was the source of life for His Son when He created Him, and when He vivified Him when He saved Him out of death. John 6, 57 According as the living Father commissions me, I also am living because of the Father. Because God saved Jesus out of death, God is the Savior of all mankind, which includes His Son, a man, Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2.5 For there is one God and one mediator of God and mankind, a man, Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 4.10 We rely on the living God, who is the Savior of all mankind, especially of believers. As we see clearly in 1 Timothy 2.5, Jesus is a man. And in 1 Timothy 4.10, we see that the living God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, is the Savior of all mankind. He is the one who saves all out of death, including his Son, a man, Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 13.4 For even if Christ was crucified out of weakness, nevertheless he is living by the power of God. For we also are weak together with him, but we shall be living together with him by the power of God for you. Christ is living by the power of the only true God, his Father. No one lives apart from the power of God. Now I want to show you why it's important to believe that Jesus was dead dead and that his Father was the one that saved him out of death. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 Now I am making known to you, brethren, the evangel which I bring to you, which also you accepted, and which also you stand, through which also you are saved, if you are retaining what I said in bringing the evangel to you. Outside and accept you believe feignedly. For I give over to you among the first what also I accepted, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was entombed, and that he has been roused the third day according to the scriptures. The Apostle Paul lays out the foundational facts of the good news of Christ that one must believe to experience their salvation that Jesus secured 2,000 years ago. These are the same foundational facts that Paul accepted. When God grants a person belief in these truths, he seals the individual with the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 1, 13 through 14. Let's look at these foundational facts. Verse 3, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. This big foundational fact must be broken into two facts due to the widespread false belief that the dead are the living dead and not the dead dead. First, Christ died, and he died according to the scriptures. According to the scriptural truth of death, the dead know nothing and the dead do nothing. Ecclesiastes 9, 5 and 10 in Daniel 9, 26. And as we saw previously from the words of Jesus in Luke 20, 38, God is not the God of the dead. Second, Christ died for our sins. And this too is according to the scriptures. A key passage in the Hebrew scriptures concerning the death of Christ for sins is Isaiah 53. I encourage you to read that entire short chapter. Third, Christ was entombed. Again, Isaiah 53 is a key passage in the Hebrew scriptures regarding 
regarding Jesus' entombment. Fourth, he has been roused the third day according to the scriptures. In Matthew 12, 38-40, Jesus tells us about the sign of Jonah, showing that Jesus would be dead three days and three nights. See also Psalm 16, 10. Matthew 12, 38 through 40. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered him, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. Yet he answering said to them, A generation wicked and an adulterous, for a sign is seeking, and a sign will not be given to it except the sign of Jonah the prophet. For even as Jonah was in the bowel of the sea monster three days and three nights, thus will the Son of Mankind be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. Please note the verbs in relation to Jesus' death, entombment, and resurrection. Christ died is in the active voice. He was active in this part as he laid down his soul when he gave up his spirit to his Father. See John 10, 17-18 and John 19, 30. He was entombed is in the passive voice. He has been roused is in the passive voice, although some sources have this in the middle voice. 1 Corinthians 6.14 confirms the fact that Jesus' Father roused him out of death. 1 Corinthians 6.14 Now God rouses the Lord also and will be rousing us up through his power. Notice God's rousing of the Lord is likened to his future rousing of us through his power. Are we going to save ourselves out of death? No and neither did Jesus. So we see one of the foundational facts of the good news is accepting that he has been roused out of death the third day, not that he roused himself out of death the third day. And we see a confirmation in Romans 10.9 that this foundational fact must be believed. Romans 10.9, that if ever you should be avowing with your mouth the declaration that Jesus is Lord and should be believing in your heart that God rouses him from among the dead, you shall be saved. To experience our salvation and be sealed with the Holy Spirit, we are to believe in our hearts that God rouses Jesus from among the dead. The glory for Jesus' salvation out of death by his resurrection and vivification belongs solely to his Father. Jesus died. He was dead, dead, and utterly helpless. His Father saved him out of death. This simple and powerful truth is so very clear to me, but many are opposed to it for various reasons. In my next video, I will address a passage in John 2 that is used by many in Orthodox Christianity to try to prove that Jesus was not dead, dead, but he was alive and well while dead. And it is used to show that Jesus self-resurrected, that he saved himself out of death. In the meantime, I suggest you watch this video next, which addresses our current subject.